Denver Mike Meow said this is a playoff team. We expect it. And then a lot of times from Rich, it's, you know, there's a process. It's not all results orientated. You count to the scoreboard. Hunter comes out and says winning only matters. Like, as the leader of the team, how do you kind of balance all the messages of kind of where, where the, this team is expected to be? Yeah, my job, you know, my job as a leader, uh, you know, the team and, you know, the organization is to take, you know, what everybody's saying, you know, and, you know, take what Coach Bisaccia is saying and, and push that into the locker room, you know. Take what Mr. Mayock is trying to project and push that into the locker room. Take what our other leaders are saying and have their back and push that into the locker room. You know what I mean? And so for me, for me, it, it, it has never changed. The process is what matters. If you don't do the – what what that means is if you don't do, you know, Sunday night or whenever you play, right after the game until the next game, if you don't do that right, you're not going to have a very good game the next time. You know, you gotta you got to have a, a type of professionalism about you. You know, that's what they talk about being a pro. You guys – We've all seen guys in the league that flash, you know, one or two times, and they're out in two years or they're out in three years. You're like, what happened? You know, and uh, you you finally learn, like, well, he never really take care of his body. You know, he didn't study. You know, he didn't, and that it, it kind of catches up to you eventually. So I think Coach Bisaccia is talking about that process. It matters, which I thousand percent. That's what I believe in, and then I also believe that you know the the urgency to win. You know, I, I feel that. You know, and I I feel that on everybody's heart. You know, I've always felt that. That's all. It's all I've cared about, you know, is wanting to win and win it for this team. And so I feel that urgency uh, from Mr. Mayock and what he's saying, what Hunter's saying, that winning is all that matters. Because at the end of the day, it really is, you know. Um, you have to produce. That's what gives you a job in this league. Uh, but winning is, is what takes your team to the next level. And that's what we're all here to do. Eric, how do you describe um, urgency in, yeah. in, a, in a football game? I mean, when you look at the stats, the first quarters have been problematic for you guys. Yeah. It's just, is, uh, but when people say come out more ur urgent, more aggressive, what does that mean to you? And, and where's the line between that and you know what the defense is giving you and all that type of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, perf perfect example coming out with urgency to me is if we come out and start fast like we did in Dallas and we execute, we were urgent. You know, <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? If we come out and have a, a mental or a bust and it doesn't work out and we're off the field, oh, they weren't urgent today. It's, is no, you, you have to check yourself and make sure you're coming in with the right mindset. You know, Josh, I think, talked about it a little bit, coming in with a little type of swag to you, with a little kind of confidence to you. And, uh, and him and I talk about that a lot, you know. And, and, and we believe, you know, there was times where, you know, in years past, we're like, dude, where is that at, you know? And we'd talk about it like, well, we got to bring it, you know? And then there's other times where we, we see it now where more guys are having it. Well, we got to consistently do it together because – not one guy is going to be able to go out. He can't rush for 100 if I don't get him in the right run. You know, he's not going to rush for any kind of yards if I go into bad looks all day and uh, we can't, we don't block it. You know, same for me. I'm not going to throw it if certain things like it's a team game. And so often because of social media and us standing up here and we see our faces, as we make it individualized. Man, this is a team thing. We have to come out together with a collective mindset that this is how we're going to come out. And it's one thing to have the mindset. It's another thing to go do it against a good team. And that's what we have this week. And you feel like um, the urgency is tied into the execution, whether the play worked or not. That's kind of what you're yes. sort of implying. Because do you sense that there's not urgency when you guys start games? Or I, I have felt like uh, there was only one time, and I may have said it after a game, where I didn't feel like the same energy was there. But for the most part, our guy, our coaches do a fantastic job of getting us ready to play and uh, that's their job is to motivate us, you know, give us a plan that we feel great about and love and all that kind of stuff and, and, and go into it and, and fire. Um, you know, how do you fight that? You know, you can't – I can't be out there – like we talk about taking care of the football. You know, there was a – I talked about after the game, the play to Deshaun, right? He's running a deep cross. I can't see the nickel. I see the two high shell, but is he the hook player? Is he the flat player? I can't see him. Well, I'll, I'm going to throw it to Josh. I'm going to make sure I get this first down and – I'll tell Deshaun, yeah, my bad, man. I'll hit you when, next time, but I didn't want to risk that. It's not the time to risk it. End of the game, Zay Jones, I have to throw that ball. You, you know what I'm saying? I, we have to do that. So um, when you talk about, you know, you can use urgency in that or whatever, whatever you know, there's, there's a time and a place. But, but also you have to be smart, you know, especially early in games, especially against the team that we're about to play. Uh, you can't be out there just doing stupid things because their offense will go down there and make it 7 nothing fast. When you're at the line of scrimmage before the snap, uh, let's say you notice a mismatch or something on your side and maybe there's a, a chance for a big play down the field. How much freedom do you have you know, just as a quarterback to maybe check into something or audible to something? Maybe that wasn't the original call to take a shot, but you see something. Like how 
what's the line with that? Yeah, I mean, we have that's a big question, you know, because there's a lot of plays that have like alerts already built in where I don't have to, you know. Um, you know, there's uh, a lot of teams now with some of our deep threats, they're playing certain coverages, but they're playing them a little different, you know. Uh, you know, they're trying to give you the same front side look, but, but they're running someone on the back side to go try and pick, hoping you throw it to go pick it off. So it looks good when you stop the clicker, you know, but as soon as that ball's in there, it wouldn't look so good. You, you, does that make sense? So, so there's, a, there's a little hesitancy there because you have to feel it through the game. How are, they, how are they matching certain coverages? How are they matching certain personnel? How are they matching when someone's in there? there it's so, there's so much that goes into that. So, so many te- you can play quarters a lot of different ways. You know? uh, if you do it the old, simple, basic way, yeah, there's a lot of throws that you'd like to hit, but some teams play it a little bit different when they see a certain receiver in the game or a certain formation or a certain play. And so, uh, you know, as coaches and as players, we, we have to feel that through the game. But I always have freedom to try and get us completions and try and move the ball. Um, I'm never, you know, going out there and just going outside the yard that I have. Now, everyone has a yard. Mine is really big, you know, but everyone has a yard. And I try – I don't want to get out of that because then I'm going outside of what my coaches want. And so I'm trying to do everything my coaches want within that. But absolutely have freedom to see stuff and try to take shots and – a lot of insight on on plays. You know, Ole lets me put plays in, and uh, and he calls them in the games, and it's awesome. You know, so I I have some freedom in that, which is cool. That Ole is amazing at letting me do, because 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 I see it the same way. And if he doesn't see it that way, he's like, yeah, that's not going in. <laughs> you know, and it's that simple. You're, you, John Madden used to bemoan teams on third and seven throwing at five yards or third and five throwing at three. Yep. This is a team sport, but you don't write the game plan. And when there's third and fives and the only checks on your list is to go behind the line of scrimmage, at what point does this team need to change its play calling on third down? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, after every game, we take a look at, you know, is this the look we want? Did one, did, is that the look we wanted? Did you check to the right thing? Uh, did we execute that as an offense? Did we execute every assignment? Um, and, and, and then if, if you go through that and you're like, yeah, that's – we'll, we'll either take it out or we'll be like, guys, this is a good play. We just got to execute it better. You know, you, we got to do this. Or, Derek, you have to do this. Or, you know, so-and-so, you got to do this. Um, and, I'm, again, I have every time just trying to run this offense at the highest ability as my coaches want, you know. And, uh, and, and I try and do it my best and get to the things that they want to see done and all this kind of stuff. Um, but I think uh, – I believe this, that we have a very good offense. I think situationally we have been terrible, you know, and, and, in a good way, you know, like third downs have been not our best. Uh, inconsistent is probably a better word, right? Uh, red zone, we have to be better. So we, uh, Ole and the staff and all of us, we're looking at it like, okay, this is what happened. This is how we can be better. This is how we can make this play better, right? Because there's opportunities there and things like that. So how do we make that play? How do we make it a little bit better? How do we make the pocket better so we can get this? Or how do we make this route better so we can get it out faster? All of those things. We're looking at all that because we're not in the business of pointing fingers. Coach Pisacci said, tell you, as soon as you point a finger, you got three pointing back. And so we're in the business of problem solving. You know, we can all, we can all create a lot of problems. I can sit up here and say a lot of things and give you guys a lot of tweets and it'd probably be break the internet, you know. But um, but I'm in the business of solving problems. My job is to solve problems and do my best. And so that's what we're doing. Derek, Jeez. how does Chiefs defense is um, kind of done a turnaround this year throughout the season gotten better? Yeah. Um, what do you see from the defense now compared to maybe what you were seeing going into that first meeting with them? Well, that, what I saw in film is they're very good players. You know, I, I see the same guys. You know, you see the same guys. They're healthy. Um, you know, you schematically they're doing all spag stuff you know he's a great coach they have great staff over there um they have great secondary the corners are really good the safeties are really good they have multiple safeties that can play the linebackers are athletic they can run they can hit the d-line is the d-line everyone knows you know those guys chris and and frank and you know, the big guys in the middle and melvin and uh, all those guys they're all great great players and uh sometimes it just takes a little bit to you know hey oh this is what we're going to be good at right now this what what worked for that group last year may not work for this group this year so you know they're still doing their stuff but just uh percentage wise and different things like that I mean they can from the first half of the year second half are they doing things much different I mean I, you still, still see the same things maybe they're executing a little bit better um and things like that but anytime I play these guys I know what I'm in for it's going to be it's going to be a tough match they got a whole bunch of good players with really good coaches and when when you have those two things it's usually a recipe for good things so we have our work cut out for us <clears throat> how does the atmosphere at Arrowhead Stadium obviously one of the toughest places to play in the league how does that compare to what you've seen so far from the home crowd at Legion Stadium oh yeah I mean Arrowhead 
I honestly, I have always loved playing there. Um, you know, it's always been such a cool atmosphere just as a football player to get to play, you know, play in and, you know, hear their chant and all that kind of stuff. Uh, their fans aren't so nice to us, but um, still, it's a really cool atmosphere to be in. It's super loud. I've always liked playing in loud stadiums anyway, because I'm just in, you know, it's more you're just in your own helmet. You know, you don't have to hear anything else or any of the chatter. You just play football. And I, I've enjoyed that. Uh, but it's, all, it's always one of the toughest places to play. Uh, our stadium is, uh, you know, they're learning, you know, when to be loud and when not to be loud, uh, obviously. But I think it's a great atmosphere. Um, you know, it's super uh, you know, energetic. Um, our fans are, uh, you know, super enthusiastic and all those kind of things. Uh, but one thing, the only difference is just situational football, you know, if I could compare the two, is, you know, our stadium, they, they get excited football, you know, NFL football is new to them. So we hit a big play in the red zone and it's really loud and it stays really loud. You know, whereas you go to Arrowhead, they hit a big play, they clap and then they they shut up. They, they celebrate after touchdowns, you know, and uh, I'd say that's really the only difference. But both stadiums, the energy is great. I assume the uh, production is mostly how a quarterback at your level gains trust in a receiver, how they produce. Are you even surprised at Hunter's maturation, where he is now? I mean, with Darren out, he kind of appears to be your top target. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised um, at all. Um, we have spent, I think Hunter and I have spent more time together, you know, than any receiver I've ever had, you know, um, on the field, off the field, uh, FaceTiming him, like literally yesterday, just putting up my phone and saying, hey, we got these plays in and watching the cut up with him, you know, while well, he's at his house, we're watching it. I'm at my house watching it and showing him what I see and all this kind of stuff. So uh, just the level of communication that we have um, is, is a very, it's very high level. And so to see him, one, it's, it's one for me to go to, to him or to a receiver and be like, hey, I need you to do it just like this. And it's another thing for him to say, okay, and actually see it the same way on the field and do it. And he does it exactly how I need him to do it. You know what I mean? And so the, the trust is super high. Um, and, and the execution, you know, it, it's one thing to do it, but I'm throwing it and he's making great plays. And not only that, he's, I think he's the best after the catch in the NFL, if not one of the best. You know, I think the first guy always misses. And uh, he's super hard to tackle, so you always want to get the ball in his hands. And uh, to see him, you know, emerging as that guy, it, it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, you know, maybe if someone looks at a picture of him, it may surprise him, or if he walks in a room, you'd be a little shocked that it's him. Uh, you know, but I think that's the beautiful thing about him is that he's always, you know, felt that way, carried that chip on his shoulder, and and, and worked his tail off because he's. Everyone's going to say he's a hard worker and he's super smart, but he doesn't get enough credit for how talented he is. You know, he's also a very good football player. You know, from a talent perspective, so uh, he creates separation. And as a quarterback, if you can create separation and see it the way that I see it. While these guys are rushing, I need you to be able to see it the way I see it. And if you don't, it usually leads to bad things. He's a guy that sees it the way that I see it, and it's it's led to a lot of production for him. All right. Thanks, Dad. Yep. Thank you. You good with Tedford? Thank you. Did he get it? Yeah. Is it official? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Teddy. Yeah. I hope he's there forever. Yeah, I love Teddy.